In this video, we're going to take a look in detail at the Revit user interface. We're inside an existing project, and for this one, I've just used one of the sample models that comes with Revit. However, we're not going to be really doing anything with the model itself. So the Revit user interface is divided up into several different areas. Right at the very top left hand corner, we have the quick access toolbar. We have a help section, again, right at the very top, but this time on the right. We have our main ribbon bar system where we can find the majority of our tools. Below that, we have a properties window on the left hand side, and directly below that, we have a project browser window. And then taking up the majority of the screen, we have our main workspace. So let's go through these different areas in detail. So at the very top left hand corner, we have the quick access toolbar. There's some common tools in here, such as save and open and undo and redo and so on and so forth. This is fully customizable. Right clicking on any of these buttons, you have the option to remove them from the quick access toolbar. You can also add in separators so you can divide your tools into groups. Moving your mouse over any of these buttons, a little tooltip will appear. You'll get a bit of text explaining the tool. You may get a picture, and there may even be a video, uh, a video animation demonstrating the particular tool. Next to the title of the command in the tooltip, in brackets, you may have two letters. That's the keyboard shortcut within Revit. And in Revit, they're generally only two letters long, and there's no need to, to press enter once you've typed in the two letters. Some of these tools have additional options, and you'll see these little black triangles either on the buttons themselves or just to the side or below. And clicking on that will expand a small menu with the additional tools. Clicking the button right on the far right hand side of the quick access toolbar, you have further controls over customizing it. Going to the far right hand side where we have the help section, you have an icon that looks like a pair of binoculars. Clicking on this will open up the online help page for Revit, where you can search for common terms or any queries that you may have. And the website will suggest a list of topics and articles that may be of use. Next to that, you have your Autodesk account, which you should be signed in with. Next, we can access the online app store. So long as you have the full version of Revit, you can download and install apps, third party tools and plugins for Revit. Again, we have a help button. And clicking on the black triangle, you can access information about your current version of Revit. Directly below that, we have our main ribbon bar. This is divided into tabs. Some of these tabs will be based on disciplines such as architecture, structures, steel, systems, for example. Some of them may contain specific tools such as the massing and sight, the collaborate and the view, for example. The most common tab that you'll probably use is the modify tab. This is where you can find your modified tools such as moving and copying. But you'll also notice through the use of Revit, when you start a command, when you select an element, Revit will automatically take you to the Modify tab, where in the empty portion, you may get additional tools specific for what you've got selected on the command that you're in. Inside these tabs, the tools are further broken down into groups. For example, on the Modify tab, we have a Create group, the Measure group, View, Modify, Geometry, Clipboard and Properties. Within those groups, you'll find tools relating to that group. And again, moving your mouse over any of these tools, you should get a tooltip that will appear. Right clicking on any of these buttons, you have the option to add them to the quick access toolbar. If you're finding that you're having to do a few clicks, maybe you need to go to a tab, maybe you need to expand a group to get to the tool that you commonly use, you can right click and you can add them to the quick access toolbar.
after the modify tab, we have this little button here, this minimize button. There's various degrees to which you can minimize the ribbon bar system. Clicking on this will cycle through the different options and eventually you'll get back to the beginning. You can also click on the little black triangle for the drop down and you can choose specifically the type of minimization that you want. Below the room bar on the left hand side we have the properties window. These windows can be turned on and turned off. You can simply click the X in the top right hand corner to close and remove those windows. To turn them back on, on the ribbon bar, simply go to the view tab. And on the far right hand side, you have user interface. Finding the window you want to turn back on, simply tick it and they will reappear. These windows can be undocked from Revit. Left clicking and holding down where it says properties in the properties window, I can undock the properties window. This is independent to Revit, so it can exist outside the application on a different monitor, for example. Dragging this around, there are various docking points around Revit, so you don't have to have them in the default location. Should I place the properties window on top of the project browser? I can merge them into the same window and have them tabbed at the bottom. To unmerge them, I just simply need to left click and hold down on the tab and I can remove the properties window from the project browser window. Again, to dock on the left hand side above the project browser, I'm going to get the full size blue preview pane. If I move my mouse down ever so slightly, I should get a half sized preview. And that will allow me to dock the properties window directly above the project browser. The properties window will display initially the properties of the view that you're currently looking at. In this case, the default 3D view. However, should you select an element within Revit, the properties window will update to display the properties of the element that you've selected. The project browser is our main way of navigating within Revit. There are several categories which will exist to start off with. For example, in this project, we have views, legends, schedule quantities, sheets, families, groups, and Revit links. Under views, we'll find all our views. We can expand and contract any of these options by clicking the plus and minus button next to the heading. The project browser can be fully customized, so you can have your own way of organizing your views. Double clicking on a view will open that within the main workspace. When you open up multiple views, they will exist as tabs across the top of the screen. Just like with the properties window, you can drag the tab, you can undock the window, and they can exist outside of the Revit application. For example, you could have a 3D view on one monitor and a floor plan on another. To redock, just drag and drop the window back to where the tabs are at the top of the main workspace. To close a view, just simply click the X on the tab. At the very bottom of your main workspace, towards the left hand side, we have a row of icons here. These are our visual tools and they're unique to the view you're currently looking at. For example, we can change the scale of the view, the detail level, of which there's three presets within Revit. We can change the visual style, such as wireframe, shaded, and realistic if you want your materials rendered. We can turn the sun path on, and we can add shadows. We can temporarily hide and isolate elements or categories of elements. And using the reveal hidden elements tool, we can reveal elements which have been turned off on being visible 
in this particular view. Thank you for watching.